Welcome to this lecture on MATLAB plots. So as you might already know, and if you don't know, it's okay. MATLAB is the best environment to visualize and plot. So let me show you an example. Let's say I have a vector, which is x. It contains integers starting at 0 and ending at 100. So that's 101 size vector. And to make sure, all you have to do is type in length of the vector x. It's 101. Imagine that this x vector is your x axis, okay? And you would like to create a corresponding y axis, which you would like to visualize a certain function that you're curious to see how it looks like. All you have to do is create a variable, y, which stands for your function, f of x or whatever it is. Just type in any expression you want. So let's say you'd like to plot, I don't know, x squared, for example. All you have to do is type in x squared, but not in that way. You will get an edit because this square is basically, as we discussed in lecture three, when we talked about matrices and arrays, this square only works for numbers. So if I say two square, I'm safe. But if I go ahead and say y is equal to x squared as such, it's an error. What is the error saying? The inputs must be a scalar and a square matrix so that this works. To compute element-wise power, which is what we need, right? When we compute x squared, we need to compute element-wise the squaring given each value of x. So use power dot hat instead. So let's go ahead and do what Matt is saying. So dot hat, and there you go, okay? Um, so let's plot y versus x. So x goes here, y goes here, hit enter, and there you have it. There is your function. Let's say you're not satisfied with the line width on my computer, it looks light. So all I have to do is open and close. Actually, this is called an attribute. So if you go ahead and type in help plot, there you could see options. So here you go, x, y. This actually stands for the line format. So two minus signs means plot it in a dashed format. R means red. Line width two. So this is how thick the line is. By default, is I think it's one. So let's go ahead and do a line width of two. So I'm just going to copy paste what I have here and hit enter. As you can see, the line is thicker, which is what I need. Now let's say I want a dashed line. I don't want a solid line. So right after Y, just place two minus signs. And there you have it. You can see the line being dashed. Say you would like a stars. You don't want a line. You just like dots or stars. There you have it. You could zoom in to see that they're actually stars. Click the magnifying glass right here. There you can see them. You could also click on the data cursor and click on each point by point and navigate using your arrows as such. You could see the X and corresponding Y value of your plot, which is really cool. You can also give an X label, which means the label of your X axis. So say this is my X values. But let's say the X value stands for something more descriptive. So let's say it's a temperature. Temperature. There you can see the X label as temperature. Similarly, you have something called a Y label, which is the same thing, but for the Y axis. And let's say this is price of an ice cream. So it increases quadratically with temperature. So the price of an ice cream is on the Y axis. Say I would also like a title. So price of ice cream, price of an ice cream versus, right? There you have it right here. And what else could we add? Let's say you would like a grid. So you'd like to discretize your plot. You can go ahead and type in grid on, which means turn on my grid. And there you have it. You can also turn on your subgrids using the minor. So grid minor as such. And by default, the color of the plot is blue. Let's say you would like to have another plot, which is black, let's say, or red, right? If you want to have another plot on the same window or the same, in math app terms, on the same plot, you can use the hold on. So hold on as such. This means that if you want to plot again, do not erase the previous plot and plot on top of it. Or in other words, hold on and wait for me to plot another one. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and plot x versus, you can go ahead and type in another function right after it. So you don't have to go ahead and say y2 is, I don't know, 
cosine x, let's say, and plot y2. You don't have to do that. You can, in the same sentence, in the same command, say plot x, and let's say you'd like to plot this time x squared plus 5 times x in red color. And there you can see it. It's not that bright. Let me, it's not that thick. Let me put a line width of 2. And there you can see it. Let me zoom in. I'm sorry that it's really close. I thought 5x is going to do a good job, but it didn't. So I'll put a 50x. Now recall that we hit hold on. So if I plot again, it's going to plot a third plot. So I'm going to say 50x but in magenta, which is a color, and line width of let's say 2 again, and hit enter, and there you have it. Okay, there, there it is. Um, this data cursor is annoying me, so let me delete it. So right now I have three plots, x squared, x squared plus 5x, and x squared plus 50x. It's not descriptive, it's not. let's actually show that this plot corresponds to x squared, this one to x squared plus 5x, and this one to x squared plus 50x. How to do that? Well, all I have to do is call the legend and pass it three arguments. The first one is a description for the first plot, so this one is x squared. The second one is x squared plus 5x, and the third one is x squared plus 50x. And just let me add an f of x is equal to on each one, right? Hit enter. And there you have a legend. So this legend is being descriptive. It's telling you the blue one corresponds to this message right here. The red one corresponds to x squared plus 5x and the magenta one corresponds to x squared plus 50x. I'm going to close the figure and for additional documentation, for additional options, you can easily type in help plot or type in plot and hold F1 as such. This is better to read, right? It comes with examples and you could just really copy paste the example and see what it does on the go. So let's say I want to plot this. I have this snippet of code. All I have to do is copy and paste. And there you could see the plot. Okay? Now let's say I want to plot a 3D plot. 3D plots are a bit more tricky than 2D. 2D is really simple, but it's just one more dimension. So Nothing fancy. So let's say I have a function which is x times the exponential of minus x squared plus y squared, right? So this is my function, f of x, y in mathematical terms is this expression. Of course, if I go ahead and hit enter, I'm going to get an error which says you don't have x. And if I did, I don't have y. So Let's define them. So let's say I want my x, y to be on a mesh grid, right? Defined from minus two till two with steps of 0 0.1. So MATLAB is going to return an array for x. This is an array of size 41 by 41 because the length of minus two till two with steps of 0 0.1 is 41. So the x axis is going to be 41 by 41 and so is the y. Right, and this is a mesh grid, so this is just to create an xy plane. Think about it that way. Now you can call the z as such, and so now you have your x, y, and z of compatible dimensions 41 by 41, so as y and so as z. Now you should call the surf or surface function, which deals with 3D plots. So x, y, z as such, hit enter, and there you get a beautiful plot of the function. It looks like the MATLAB logo, but it's not the MATLAB logo. It's actually a scaled Gaussian, I think, I'm not sure. But it's really close to the MATLAB logo, right? Actually, the MATLAB logo is, in fact, the 2D heat equation. Okay, right, so now let's do some subplotting, which means that plot on the same Plot. So we're going to plot subplots on the same plot. Let's open a figure first of all. As such, we get an empty figure and notice that it's called figure 2. Figure 1 was the 3D plot we already had. So in case I close it, I close figure 2 and I call figure again. We're going to see figure 1. In case you hit in figure again, you see figure 2. And again, figure 3. Note that if you want to keep track of your figure, um, let's say you want a figure with figure ID, one, two, three, there you go. 
And if you want to save it inside a variable, let's say f1 or f123. So now f123 is an object. And look at the logo right here. It's actually an object of type UI, which is of type figure. Okay. And there you have some related properties to this figure. So if I click on all properties, you're going to see a bunch of properties that I don't know the half because I never got to use them. In case you want to use them and read more about them, all you have to do is click in help figure as such. You can click on the reference page and read all about the figure and its properties. Now going back to the figure, let's say now I have a bunch of figures open in front of me as such. They're disgusting and I don't feel like going to each and every one and clicking on the X, X and close and close. That's exhaustive. All I have to do is type in close all which means close all my figures. Well, now I'm free of figures. So figure, I have figure one again, and let's type in subplot. Let's imagine that I want a subplot, simply a, a plot with two subplots on the upper half and the lower half. So if you think about it in a matrix form, it's as if I have an array of size two by one, right? So two, one, and the first one. So here you can see that MATLAB created the first subplot for me. So this reads as follows. 2, 1, which means 2 by 1, and start with the first one. We're now at in the first one. So let's go ahead and plot, I don't know, let's call x again from 0 to 100, and plot x versus sine x with a line with, uh, there you can see my sine x, it's not really, not, it's not really discretized properly because of my x, let's take steps of 01 and plot again. There you could see a sine function, right? You could go ahead and treat it like we treat the previous plot, namely give it an x label, let's call it this time x, and the y label, let's call it sine of x, give it a title, sine of x, versus x and use of grid there you can see it right x sine x and let's go to the other subplot 2 1 but this time 2 enter there you have it let's plot this time x versus sine x squared right in a red color there you could see sine x squared versus x and let us give it a title call it sine x squared there you have it and you get the idea now let's say you would like a subplot consisting of four plots, two by two. We can do the same thing. Let's open another figure now, figure two, it's empty. Let's say I have an x-axis which consists of values starting at zero with steps of 0 0.2 up to two pi, okay? And let's call the cylinder function. So x, y, z is cylinder of the four cosine of x. What cylinder does is that it generates a cylinder. So if I call it as such, MATLAB will return x, y, z coordinates of a cylinder using this function right here. Let's plot x, y, and z to see what I mean. So as we said, subplot this time two by two, but let's start with the first one. We have to mention explicitly figure two and let's start with subplot first one. Call the mesh of x as such and let's give it a title x. As you can see, we have plotted the x array in 3D as such, and it's only found in the first subplot. Let's do the same thing for y and z, right? So subplot, now the second one, call mesh of y, and give it a title of y as such. Same thing for third subplot, mesh of z, and give it a title of z. Now the last, subplot which is four we're going to mesh all those guys together give it a title of x y and z as you can see right here we have plotted the x matrix in 3d for each index of the matrix we just plot the index element so if i go ahead and hover here and plot a data cursor you can go ahead and verify that the eighth entry the entry located in the eighth row and the fifth 15th column has this value 2.215 so let's go here and type in x 8 15 or 15 8 so 15th row and 8th column is 2.2153 as here 
So what we're doing here is really we're just plotting the matrix. For each row and column, just plot the entry as a height, right? Same thing for Y, Z, and in the last subplot, we plot all this guy together. So as you can see, this is the cylinder function. It returns X, Y, Z as such, the cylinder, okay? With, of course, the radius being 4 cosine X. So that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.